Interessantes. Hey, Composing Gloves here, and in this episode of MIDI Music Theory, we are going to be talking about compound intervals. So you have memorized intervals one, the unison to the octave, or the perfect, the perfect eighth octave, same difference. So you've memorized these, and you you know them on you know a basic elementary level. Like if I play a G from a C. You'll be able to go from your C and you'll be able to say, oh, from C to G, that's a perfect fifth. You'll be able to say that. If I asked you what the perfect fifth was from F, you'd be like, oh, that is a C. Or if I said, what's the perfect fifth from A, you'd be like, that's, I mean, from D. See, I, I'm so bad. I, I think the answer before I ask the question, here's A or the perfect fifth from like C sharp. Oh, you'd be like, oh, that's G sharp. And, you know, you could do that now. So you've learned the interrelationship of these things. Now, how do we determine? So if you use this C as a new base, it just continues on, right? Minor second, major second, minor third, major third, perfect fourth. Da, 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 da. So what if you keep it, though? So this is your base. What happens to these intervals up here? Is it still a minor second? The answer is no. You just add new numbers. So this became a, was was a second before. Well, we were at eight. So this becomes nine. So minor ninth. Major ninth. Why is this important? Well, they're terms used for particular chords, and that's why they're important. Realistically, you only really go up to a 13th before you just start saying you're using stacked chords, where you're just using like a, a C stacked on a C. Like, for example, this is a chord. This is a C major chord. Dun, 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 dun. If we were to just clone it, as you can see, it's much easier to see if you just clone it. Bang, we just stacked it up. This is just two C major chords on top of each other. You don't need to give like some crazy analysis of what chord this is. It's just C major on C major. Like, ooh, whoop de doo you just moved it up an octave. So there. now, of course, we can get quite intense in a lot of other fields of music theory where this where we could spend all day talking about that but for now it's like that's like no musician's gonna go around talking like crazy talk when they talk about this they're talking about it because it has a big impact on the way the chord sounds harmonically so we need to ha understand these bigger intervals so this is a octave so this would be a minor ninth a major ninth because it's minor second major second minor tenth major tenth so it's pretty easy to tell because these from here to here that's nine and these were so that's basically like an octave plus a second. From here to here is the third. So an octave plus a third will equal a tenth because you're doing the nine, nine. So we have the tenth. Then we have, now this one is the perfect interval. And this is actually a perfect 11th. Then you get the 12th. So you get, well, this is a tritone. So again, weird crap. We're not going to talk about that right now. Then we have the, uh, what is this? 11th, 12th, and then you have 13th which is the minor and major sixth. So minor 13th and major 13th. And then technically you could have a 14th and then you repeat. It's, and that's pretty much the story of compound intervals. Now, this, these things can play a big role because, well, let me just play a couple a uh, couple notes for you. So here I'm playing, oh, I'm playing pretty high. I'm gonna play low. So let's say that this is my chord. Let me make it a nicer sounding chord. Let me add some reverb. Yeah, okay, there we go. Nice sound of chord. So let's play, let's say I play, let me turn it up just a touch. I don't know why I turned it down. So here is a octave on top of that. So this is a major triad. We haven't talked about this yet, but it's a, we're playing a our tonic or our bass note. And then we're playing a, so this is a, a, a major third. You should be able to do that now. When I play two notes, it say C to E. It's like, oh, that's a major third. And then you stack, if we do C to G, that's a perfect fifth. If you stack them together, you get a major chord. We'll talk about this later. But anyways, you can see if I add an octave up, so so eight notes, so I add an octave to this chord. That's what we get. It's really nice. It's This is in root position. So now, what if I add a ninth instead of an octave? Whoa, what if I add a, uh, a tenth? What about a minor tenth? It doesn't really like it because it's this is a major if I make it minor. Oh, that sounds kind of nice. Or if I do a, let's say, an 11th. So 
So you see these now this is sort of melody territory is what I'm messing with right now So it's not theoretically part of the chord. There's like It forms the harmony, but at what point is it like the chord? If you know what I'm saying, never mind. Forget what I'm talking about. But anyways, we are we are doing this and you can influence these things. Now, why this is important is later on, you're going to learn about suspended second and fourth chords, which are essentially you take the note that was up here and you move it down here. This becomes compound intervals are super useful when you start getting into... Uh, inversions with chords so it's really important this is another thing in the standard repertoire that you just need to know so go ahead memorize that learn it my voice cracked when I said no which is like I don't understand why my voice still cracks occasionally I don't even know what that deal is all about So just really interesting, fun stuff. And your ability to invert chords and understand extensions will and understand basically suspended and how they relate to compound intervals is going to like make things way easier. So go around for the next couple days and just say out loud, oh, what's the what's a minor ninth from a D? And then, you know, go from there. Go like, what's the tritone from F? What's the, you know, just ask yourself intervals and answer them in your head because the faster you get at this, the more intuitive it'll be. It'll be easier for you. And this is arguably one of the most important things to do in music theory. Because if you can understand the relationships, you can write it out. Like you'll know what things sound like. You'll have terms for it. You won't have to think. It'll be intuitive. You you can think about more important things now than like sitting there counting figures and numbers and, and crap. So I'm just telling you, uh, what I've found when I've been creative, this has made a big difference. So if you had any questions, have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.